All right, so for page five, we are working on question nine, which is just another um, hypothesis test problem, and question 10, which is just a um, general um, knowledge test for p-values. All right, so for this test, basically um, subjects Subjects 1 through 20 uh, were put into a training program called Step Forward. And so we want to see whether or not this Step Forward program helps children to adapt to U.S. culture, so increases their ability to adapt to U.S. culture. And so we take... Um, so to measure that, we take um, their ARS score in July before the training program, and then their AS or ARS score in October after their training program for each subject. So for question A, they just want you to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So <laughs> since we're taking two measurements for every subject, so one in July, one in October. These measurements are paired for each subject. So you're dealing with a paired t-test. So for a paired t-test, your null is always mu d equals zero. So the mean difference is zero. And your alternative hypothesis in this case is mu d is greater than zero because you want to assess whether the program had increased their ability to adapt to U.S. culture. All right. So here they say the observed for B, they say the observed test statistic is 1.56 and the corresponding p-value is 0 0.067. And for, three I, or for BI, they're just asking what is the distribution? So what is your null distribution? <coughs> So since it's a paired t-test to start off with, your distribution is t. And for your null distribution, the degrees of freedom are always n minus 1. So in this case, df equals 20 minus 1. So your an final answer is a t-distribution with 19 degrees of freedom. All right, so for B part two, they're asking you to consider the following statement regarding this p-value. So if this study were repeated many times, we would see a t-test statistic as large or larger than 1.56 in about 6.7% of the repetitions. And they're asking you, well, what's wrong with this statement? So this statement is missing one key element. When you're interpreting p-values, it is always, always assuming h naught is true. So the part that's missing is assuming your null h naught is true. All right, and then finally, if the program really had no effect on average, so if the null were actually true, what would have been the expected value of the test statistic? So if your null is actually true, then your test statistic should be zero. Because Um, as you can see, your test statistic is um, d bar minus zero, and our h naught is that mu d is zero, so your final test statistic would just be zero. All right. So for the next question,
What is that p-value? So a market research firm was interested in assessing if a majority of all young adults like the package designed for a new stack bar. That is, H0 equals H0 is p equals 0.5 versus the alternative, which is p is greater than 0.5 at a 5% level. So a large random sample um, was shown the package design, and the sample proportion that liked it was p equals 0.48. All right, so, and then um, the question asks, which of the following is reasonable for the p-value? So, the p-value is calculated assuming the null is true, and your null is that p equals 0.5. So, if your p-hat were to be 0.5, then that's half the area, So, already from here, we can see that um, if your p-hat was 0.5, then your p-value would be 0.5. <coughs> and so, your alternative is that p is greater than 0.5. But the p-hat we got is actually less than 0.5. So from here, we can tell that already your p-value is going to be greater than 0.5. So since you can think of it as actually your p-hat that you got is actually in the wrong direction of your alternative hypothesis, so your p-value has to be greater than 0.5. So the only p-value that's greater than 0.5 here is 0.65, and that's your answer.